So the way I see deities, like the one for us, is that every deity has a different energy and set of characteristics that they embody. You can see this through their objects or what they hold, through their characteristics or personalities described in the stories. But really I think deity worship, if done or embodied in the right way, means to take upon or see characteristics of that deity and allow yourself to merge with that energy. I've always wondered how deity worship made any sense. When I was younger, it felt a little silly, like fairy tales. But now I get it, and learning about Jungian archetypes from a secular perspective really showed me how this all actually makes sense. So I started visiting temples and understanding the stories, and I realized that I was very wrong. There's great power in deities, and by understanding them, by embodying the energetic qualities of them, to shift your state of consciousness. Essentially, these deities act as archetypes. You might have heard of Jungian archetypes. Jungian archetypes, he categorized different states of the collective consciousness. Symbols and images that derive from the collective unconscious. From the Jungian archetypal perspective, an archetype is the essence that holds particular timeless qualities. For example, a king, queen, prince, magician. And the general idea is you can learn to integrate these qualities by embodying the energy, by embodying the characteristics of that archetype. Becoming like a king by ruling with wisdom, conviction, strategic vision, and purpose and kindness. Ruling like a great king. But more importantly, how does it feel to step into the toes of a king? What would it feel like? When you meditate and visualize being that, as that, you are tuning yourself closer to the essence of that deity. Now who knows if they are real or not, or if they are simply a human manifestation in sort of an astral plane. They are this energetic manifestation we as humans have created because we've thought about it and we've put our energy into it. So it may more be like that. Imagine going past your ego, your personal ego wants and desires, insecurities and fears, and into something beyond, something eternal, beyond who you think you are, beyond who you feel you are, and starting to feel like you have the qualities that you desire. All these different qualities. Imagine having a blueprint. Imagine going past your personal insecurities by aspiring yourself and inspiring yourself to be greater. By doing this, you attune your consciousness into a greater consciousness, into a new state, into a new feeling, and feel into how it would feel to have those qualities, to be able to, for example, walk and talk like Ram or Hanuman from the great stories, to have that level of courageousness and honesty and bravery. The movie Batman Begins depicts a great example of this. It's one of my favorite movies of all time. As Bruce Wayne attunes himself to a new archetype that he has created, one, he is called the Batman. When Bruce is the Batman, his personality faults don't matter. As he chooses to live up to the characteristics of an idea, of an ideal that is beyond any one man. And by doing so, he embodies greatness and goes beyond his preconceived limits and saves his city. Show the people of Gotham their city doesn't belong to the criminals and the corrupt. In the Depression, your father nearly bankrupted Wayne Enterprises combating poverty. He believed that his example could inspire the wealthy of Gotham to save their city. Did it? In a way, their murder shocked the wealthy and the powerful into action. People need dramatic examples to shake them out of apathy, and I can't do that as Bruce Wayne. 
as a man. I'm flesh and blood. I can be ignored. I can be destroyed. But as a symbol, as a symbol, I can be incorruptible. I can be everlasting. What symbol? Something elemental, something terrifying. So here are some things to think about. How would your eyes look? How would your expression be? How would you move? How would you talk? How would you walk? If you were to embody the characteristics of that deity. While doing this, visualize those qualities. Visualize the deity as you and feel into the essence of what that deity is trying to convey. I think that is where the power or attunement really lies. It lies into attuning to the energy or the frequency or the state of that deity. The visual aspect, the story aspect, is simply an entry point or a doorway into the energy of that deity. So it's a ton of mind. Think about how he would move, how he would look, his devotional qualities, the way he, his eyes are, the way he uses strength. Look at his object, his big mace that he holds. I don't know the name of it exactly. You can see what that symbolizes. So you can visualize yourself holding that. Can you feel the power, the energy behind that? So now you're going through your life and you encounter something difficult, you encounter uh, a stressful situation, a, a situation that requires some power, some, some belief, some conviction, some Hanuman energy. You can visualize Hanuman and you can embody the qualities that he embodies, essentially stepping by and allowing his soul essence, his energetic essence to be embodied in you rather than sticking to your ego state, which may currently be in a state of fear or uh, unhappiness or anything like that. Do something like singing the mantras. This is where something like the Hanuman Chalisa really comes into play. People have found great benefit from chanting the Hanuman Chalisa. And you might say, oh, how does it work even if you don't necessarily believe in it? But some people have then had benefits from time to time. Well, I would say that everything in this world is energetic and magical. And so everything is the form of manifestation through the thought forms that we send out into the world, into the universe. And so when a lot of people are really strongly putting a lot of energy and belief and conviction and feeling into a certain type of song and music and it has an intention behind the creation well if you listen to it if you chant it that energy that intention behind it is now going to be influence you in your life so that's why i think chanting or listening to the mantras of that deity with the qualities you want to embody is really powerful as well the pragmatic view is to really see well i can use attunement energetic attunement to influence my state to get out of the ego mind to shift into the consciousness of that deity i want to embody and then to use that to step out of the world and so when there's a situation where i might need a particular quality to excel in or to gain spiritual development and because my ego is holding me back i can use that energetic attempt can use ganesha energy to remove obstacles every animal has its own qualities to it as well right like a monkey is very mischievous very playful so in Tibetan Buddhism, Vajrayana Buddhism, they actually practice something where they meditate on hundreds of different deities that they have until they realize they were none of those things. You know, they identify as something, they identify as another deity, they keep identifying. And 
when you do that, you start to see, oh, these are characteristics that I'm identifying with, that the identity that you are attached to is very fluid. Vajrayana practice. On the surface, <clears throat> they look like um, uh, making uh, offerings to deities, but in the depths, what goes on is that you visualize yourself as the deity, so you replace your body image with the image of the deity. You replace your internal talk with the mantra of the deity. Um, you uh, make gestures with your hands called mudras, which impacts the physical body. And then you uh, create the feel in, the, in your body, the emotional quality of the deity. You're doing all these simultaneously? At all at the same time. So you've got the physical body and emotional body helped by the mudras. It's a lot to keep you've, track of. Uh, you, well, yeah, that's the point. You've <laughs> got your, in, you replace your, your personal internal talk with the mantra of the deity in talk space. Mm -hmm. Then you visualize yourself as the deity, so you replace your own personal image with the deity's image. Um, now, since we identify with body and mind, Whatever goes into the brain in the place where body and mind experience is processed, the brain says, this is who I am. So if you replace the physicality and emotionality of your human self with that of an archetype, and you replace your mental images with that of the archetype, and you replace your internal talk with that of the archetype, you become the archetype your identity shifts from your normal human existence to this other thing. Now, this is not insanity. <laughs> uh, it has to be distinguished from two states, insanity and shamanic possession. It's neither of those. It's a systematic process designed to bring about classical enlightenment, but in a way very different from early Buddhism. In early Buddhism, you would break things down this part is the physical body, this part is the emotional body, okay. You break things down into the pieces and then you would see, oh, I'm not these pieces. In Vajrayana what you do is, you work with the same pieces, but you intentionally create mythical versions of them. Notice that when you do that, you become that, and that gives you the exact same insight. In other words, in early Buddhism you got insight into the arbitrary nature of self-identification. You become enlightened. Enlightened means that your identification process is elastic. You're nothing particular, so you can be anything, so you're everything, but you're also the nothing that's the source of everything all at the same time. In early Buddhism, they did that by dividing into pieces and then seeing, I'm none of these. But in Vajrayana, you create a mythical version of it Notice that your identity shifts. And then when you drop that, your identity shifts back to the human, but you realize that it must all be arbitrary. And that's it, guys. Thanks for watching this video. And thank you so much for your support, as usual. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to leave a comment down below, like and subscribe, and let me know what you think. If you want me to make more documentary videos like this in the future, I'd be more than happy to, just really curious to hear what you guys think. Thank you.